Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Brandon Johnson so we can talk about the Anchor SoundBuds Slim. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO65. So this episode is a part of a little series that we're doing where we're reviewing a whole bunch of different earbuds and headphones and all kinds of audio equipment. Um, and uh, the last episode that we that we did, uh, I was reviewing the ErgoFit earbuds, uh, which are my favorite cheapest earbuds that you can buy that are still worth using. Um, the, the downfall of those earbuds is, well, I'm now living in a world where I don't have a headphone jack on my phone anymore, so they're not really viable to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So in November of 2017, I had to figure out, oh, what am I going to do? What, what other earbuds are, can, I, can I use? Because um, I had no experience with like what kinds of Bluetooth headphones are out there and how cheap do they come and what can I get away with? So I turned to my uh, faithful buddies here on the Nexus and I asked everybody in the Slack, yo, what, what hopefully like sub $30 earbuds can I use that do Bluetooth and Brandon immediately piped up with the SoundBud Slim. The SoundBud Slim, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, which I think is is somewhat hilarious because at the time um, I may have done the same thing I did in preparation for this podcast and tried to find the exact same carbon copy of the ones that I had um, at the time, uh, which were at the time referred to as the SoundBud Sport. Um, but they had at some point in the past four years since I first bought a pair of uh, Anchor SoundBuds um, had either been reclassified as the SoundBuds or taken off the lineup entirely. Uh, and I had actually just very recently, if I recall correctly, in November 2017, bought a pair of the SoundBuds Slim myself um, because one of the nice things about, about them is just how, um, uh, you know, that original 2015 pair is still going strong, uh, but the SoundBud Slim are a really, really nice uh, uh, kind of pair of walking around headphones, uh, and um, that's that's kind of why you know both that Anchor brand loyalty and uh, and just kind of the the build quality of this stuff is uh, is nothing to sneeze at for sure. So I always jumping at the chance to talk about this stuff. Yeah, and that's that's definitely why I took your suggestion so readily was because I was like, oh. Anchor, yes, every single one of their products that I have bought up until this point, I have been very happy with. Uh, and so I, I had a lot of faith that these were going to make me happy as well. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, they did kind of um, hit that exact same ceiling that you were looking for, that $30. So there's no, uh, no extra, um, yeah, no wiggle room there. Uh, I will say, though, from time to time, they do have sales. Like, I, I got my first pair of uh, Anchor headphones. Uh, I think it was for, like, $12 or something. It was really ridiculous um, back in 2015 because um, there was, like, a, a, a sale, a St. Patrick's Day sale. So I got, like, a green pair of them because they, you know, St. Patrick's Day. Everything comes back to Ireland. Listen to The Fringe <laughs> if you want to know why everything comes back to Ireland. These headphones really have a lot of work to do in terms of like the durability and like losability factor to, to make them to, to really compete with the $12 pair of headphones that I'm coming from. I, I think in terms of durability, fantastic. They're great. I haven't had any of them break on me. I can take a beating like a good pair of headphones. But the losability factor, mm -hmm. there's for some reason. Like, even though these are the style of earbuds where they have a cord that goes from one earbud to the other and then that loops around, like, the back of your neck, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You'd, you'd think that that would make them very, like, just as easy to keep track of as a pair of, like, wired headphones that you just, like, take out of your ears and then, you know, have them dangling from your collar or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, like, I lost my first pair of sound buds in three months. The second oh, pair no. lasts me for a year. And, like, the first pair I definitely just, like, misplaced. I have no idea where I put them. Right. And then the second pair, I know exactly where I lost them. I was at PodCon, uh, PodCon 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yes. Um, 
which, by the way, I just found out today, as of the day of recording, um, PodCon is three is not going to happen. There's there's no more years of PodCon. Sad day. What? Oh no. Yeah, it was not financially viable. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm walking around the Washington Convention Center, and uh, suddenly I just realized, wait a minute, I had my headphones around my neck earlier. They're not here anymore. What happened? Um, and it was definitely definitely because like I had them wrapped around like the outside of my collar that I yeah. didn't notice when like the little magnets that Magnet hold the two working. buds. Yeah, well, yeah, they just kind of got separated, and then, like, one of them got draped over my shoulder, and then probably just kind of fell off over the course of time, and I never noticed um, until, like, towards the end of the day. Oh, no. So, there I am, yeah, in, in Seattle, away from home, with no earbuds, uh, and and I had to walk down to a Target and buy a different brand of $30 uh, Bluetooth earbuds, which uh, I think I'll review on the next episode, so find nice. out how I, how I liked those. <laughs> So in in theory, Anchor did do something wonderful that that should help me to not lose these. They gave me a little like felt baggie with the with the snap shut you know metal nice. uh, yeah, and and I just need to get into the habit of like whenever I'm done using the earbuds, put them in the baggie, and then put the baggie somewhere where I know, you know, like v yep. I have to be very intentional about them um, because they're just a little bit too bulky mm -hmm. to like put in, like I can't wind them up and then just stick them in my pocket the way that I did with my old earbuds. Right. Um, so, I, so I have to always remember like, okay, I'm done with the earbuds, put them away in the backpack in their proper place now. <laughs> right. Um, and that's, and that's just one of those like life habits that I have to build now that yep. I'm living in this in this life with uh, Bluetooth earbuds. Oh, totally. And I think, like, that's one of the things about AirPods, too, is that, like, um, especially with the kind of substantial increased investment in those things, you kind of yeah. uh, pick, pick that up pretty quick because it's like, oh, this is, the, this is the dance I have to do now because otherwise I'm going to, you know, I can't just let these ridiculous headphones go swimming in, in, in my backpack because... Um, that would be, uh, that'd be bad. That would just be a lot of money to float around and get scratched and lose. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that was like the, the major difference. Um, like when I went from just buying like $5 pairs of sunglasses to like having an right. $80 pair of sunglasses was like, Oh, this one comes with a case so I can yep. just put them in the case all the time and they'll be safe and they won't yep. get crushed and then I don't have to spend another $80 right away. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly, yeah. exactly. So go ahead, rock me up like a good pair of headphones. Okay, so the fit uh, of these earbuds. I was really nervous when I got them and saw that they had like the little wingtip design because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like having this like poking into my outer ear. Mm -hmm. No, I love it. I love the wingtip. It keeps them in my ears so securely, so snug. Um, I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, obviously, I, I don't know the shapes of everybody's ears, but like, if you're if you're one of those people who has never been able to use earbuds because like they don't stay into your weirdly shaped ear canals or something, I, I try these ones out because I th I suspect that the wingtips will keep the the earbuds like in your ear. Right. Well, and I think another component of it too is you can like the the like wingtips and then like the um, the like actual inner ear kind of yeah um, the, the nub part yeah yeah like you can size them separately like they I, if I recall yes. correctly Anchor gives you spares like small medium large spares of each which is yeah. awesome because if you're like me the first thing you lose when you let those headphones go swimming in your backpack. Um, is like those portions they'll fall off pretty immediately and i'm not so picky that i don't mind using one that's just slightly not quite the size that i would usually use because mm. let's be real but for the most part i'm you know it's not that isn't that important to me whether it's perfect or just slightly off um because the, there are only three sizes so it's never going to be quite perfect um yeah. but i could imagine that if if you are way more pickier than i am um you can also kind of uh you know mix and match those to 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 fit basically anyone 
Um, and for something that's not custom, like I know people sometimes get those custom things that are like molded to their ears. Um, oh, whoa. And I think that it's pretty important for them to have included like the wingtips uh, because the 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 like kind of mid cable remote area with the volume up and volume down and the play pause mm-hmm. button that also houses the batteries and so right. that you know is is a little bit heavier I think than than what you would want with just uh just the little nub sticking in your ear um so the wingtip gives it that extra anchor uh to hold it hmm. in place. I see what you did there. Ah, oh, I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> it it works anyway. It works anyway. But I guess that kind of brings me to my next point, which is um, one of the attributes that I really like about Bluetooth headphones in general is if, uh, well, one of the cases where I'm using Bluetooth earbuds like this rather than over-ear headphones is usually when I'm running or walking. Mm-hmm. And walking, I don't have a problem with these whatsoever. And even running, I, I ran with my SoundBuds Slim uh, while for the two-year period that my SoundBuds Sport were um, unaccounted for. Um, uh, more on that later. Uh, but uh, the SoundBud Slim, uh, you know, the remote on kind of in the middle of the cable there, um, sometimes like if I were running um, and like the sloppier I get when I run, which happens when I run long distances, sometimes start to lose form a little bit, um, you know, it kind of start like hitting the side of my face a little bit while I was running, Yeah, which is fine. Um, it was it was never super uh, annoying or noticeable, um, but when I discovered the SoundBud Sport, that was like the first thing I swapped out. Um, so like those those are basically earmarked running headphones now because um, the SoundBud Sport um, have all of the batteries actually integrated into the earbuds. So the earbuds are super bulky, but the cable that connects them doesn't interfere with you at all. Just because kind of like you said, they they kind of um, have that same anchor. <laughs> um, but it's all in the ear, and none of it kind of uh, is is on the, the cable in between them. That said, um, I ran um, on, on treadmills and um, on paths and stuff like that with these. Never had any problem with, with fit, um, other than maybe that occasional annoyance. Um, but they're pretty darn solid. Yeah, and I, I think it would be useful for me to talk about my usual usage case, which is biking. Yeah. Um, I usually have one earbud in and one earbud out so that I can uh, you know, listen to podcasts in my right ear while I listen to traffic go by me on my left ear. Um, and like, so, so yeah, I don't have trouble with, with that, uh, with the battery pack like slapping me in the face. Um, but I do have to kind of like wrap the the cord around the back of my neck and then like tie it in an overhand knot to Mm. my chin strap to, to like the ear strap over on the other side of my helmet. Um, or if it's cold enough that I'm like wearing several layers, I can kind of like tuck it into like the folds of my hood or something like that. Um, but like every once in a while I will, uh, like the cord will start to kind of like get caught in something or, or whatever and start to like tug on my right ear and uh and then i have to like kind of you know manually free it um which is uh you know a little a little iffy of a maneuver while i'm (laughs) going at high speed right for sound quality these earbuds uh definitely exceed my minimum threshold for sound quality like i I don't i don't notice any issues with them they don't wow me but like they're earbuds yeah, I'd have to agree, especially if you're coming from like the stock earbuds. I guess I can't speak to the Android stock earbuds, but I know on iOS the stock earbuds aren't great, and even the AirPods. I don't think that the phrase "stock Android ear earpod earbuds" is like a valid phrase. <laughs> yeah, they don't give you headphones with Android phones. Uh, well, it entirely depends on which manufacturer you're getting them from. Well, and it's funny you mention it too because I feel like so my the last Android phone that I did not purchase from Ryan was a, a Droid Incredible. Like the last inbox, like shrink wrapped from the retailer from the Verizon store was a Droid Incredible. And come to think of it, I don't think that came with headphones. Yeah. No, the, the, first, the first phone that I ever bought that had headphones in the box was the Pixel 3. Nice. So and actually, those are the yeah, Pixel I Buds? Sh- uh, no, they were wired. They, they're a USB-C wired version of the Pixel Buds, essentially. Ah, um, gotcha. So I should definitely, I gave those to my sibling, and I should get them on here to review those in a 
you know, maybe a couple weeks, maybe four weeks. Who knows? Yeah, that sounds like perfect timing. Um, one thing that I that I would like to highlight about the sound quality in these uh, earbuds is that they have fantastic isolation from the outside world. Um, so I can usually just like put these earbuds in and uh, and and like go take a nap or whatever. I don't need to bring. Um, like earplugs with me any everywhere I go. Actually, these came in super handy when uh, Savannah and I went to the robot fashion show at Can Can Wonderland. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, I think that the Nexus definitely needs to like <laughs> enter in as a contestant next year because that was such a fun uh, show to watch. That does um, sound awesome. But yeah, like they they had live music there, which I wasn't expecting, and so I hadn't brought like earplugs or anything. But I had my earbuds with me, and I so I just put those on. They weren't even turned on. Um, I just put them in my ears, and like, hey, I don't have to worry about damaging my ears while listening to this music. Awesome. Yeah, that that is one really um, solid use case for this stuff. That um, uh, you know, I you don't always think about it and like um back before i uh, started driving again i was using the bus a lot and it was really great to just have have earbuds like it was a great way to cancel out the wheel noise and stuff like that because i don't mm-hmm. know i'm I'm not i wasn't used to being in a motor vehicle when i started using the bus more frequently and um yeah that's it's it's a solid feature it's a solid feature for sure um and i do acknowledge that like a lot of people a lot of cyclists hear me saying that and they're like, oh, my God, you put an earbud in, you know, because they're like nervous that I can't hear uh, the traffic that I need to. Yeah. Um, th- that's why I leave one earbud out, you know. Um, but if if uh, if you're interested in the idea of using like bone conduction headphones while cycling, uh, I am planning on borrowing some bone conduction headphones from Ryan so I can try those out. Uh, nice. see how I see how I like that experience. Um, so we'll have that review in, you know, who knows, four to six weeks. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, that sounds super interesting. Um, I, um, so I commuted by bike for the better part of three years. Um, and I think I probably used headphones while biking, like maybe a couple times. I know that some people will like bike with beats, like over your <laughs> super bassy headphones. And I guess like li- li- live your life, pals. That's that's cool. I would not do that, um, you know, for various reasons, not the least of which being I can't handle that much bass. Um, and uh, I-, I-, I do think that there's like, you know, people people hand ring about that stuff but as from cyclist to cyclist i will say uh, i'm firmly in your camp that what matters is that you're able to react to and hear what's what's going on around you and you've got you've got a good fit there and i don't know why i'm telling you that uh you after all are the uh co-chair of the saint paul bicycle coalition is that correct indeed i am so you are you are more credentialed than i by far uh on on this um, so I, I'm simply voicing my support. And I can stand the test of time, like Harrison Ford. But yeah, no, and I guess like that's that's kind of another component too, kind of as we look at start talking about the battery life. Um, yes, I know you clearly have other headphones that you use from time to time. I have other headphones that I use from time to time too, um, especially in like an open plan office, um, as my last workplace and current workplace both are. So like for me, it's usually like a one and a half hour split. Uh, so like, say I, I listen to music or podcast for three hours, I'll usually spend you know half that on earbuds and half that on over the ear headphones. So so for me, um, kind of as we move into the battery life discussion, um, I'm usually able to last like two to three weeks before I have to charge mine. Um, That's quite impressive. Yeah, but granted, that's like, you know, maybe four hours in a week, like on a heavy (laughs) usage day, right? Um, So, like, ultimately for me, that's like, you know, really it's probably more like four hours in a week and a half, right? That's that's Mm -hmm. usually where where that kind of nets out. And then it dies and then I charge it, um, which, you know, is kind of, again, a blessing and a curse because um, I don't have to charge them every night. But when I forget they're dead and i'm like oh no i have to charge them and if i forget then it's like multiple days that i'm just using the over your headphones yeah i like 
at minimum in a day, uh, I will be listening like during my commute, which is 30 minutes each way. Um, and then usually like probably about an hour while I'm just sitting in like the staff lounge getting whatever work done. Um, but it, it can like, it varies widely from day to day how much I listen. Like if, for example, I am going from school over mm -hmm. to JavaScript, Minnesota, right? That's right. an hour and a half of biking out to JavaScript, Minnesota, and then like another hour back to home. Right. Um, and and these, these headphones definitely 100% will last an entire day uh, if I remembered to charge them the night before, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that means that quite often I can get away with like two or maybe even like three days worth of listening right. um, without having to charge them. But that means that like, like if I'm not in the habit of charging these every single night consistently, then I put myself at serious risk of having them die in the middle of the day unexpectedly. Uh, right. And then, and then it's like, well, I am just out of luck because I, there's no way that I can hook these up to my external battery while they're on my you know, hanging from my ears while I'm <laughs> oh, biking. <man>. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you say that, but I've done it. And then you're, and then you added while I'm biking. I have not done that while I'm biking. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've done that in some pretty ridiculous circumstances. Like I'll, I'll have it in my backpack and I'll run a USB cable up to my earbuds. I've done that before. <laughs> um, but I haven't done it while biking now. Yeah. Um, speaking of charging, uh, they charge via micro USB. Mm, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Uh, but like, especially in, in 2017, at least, uh, when I was first looking around at, at Bluetooth earbuds, uh, there were literally none that charge via USB-C, which is what my ideal situation would be. Right. Uh, I it's 2019 now. I'm not sure if that's changed. Um, I suspect, especially at the thirty dollar price point, mm, you, you're not going to be able to find USB C charging ones. The micro USB thing has come back to bite me a little bit too, um, as more and more of my other peripherals have started using USB C. My laptop charges over USB C and has only USB C ports because it's a MacBook Pro. I don't want to carry a USB C cable to micro USB, um, and uh, USB Type A uh, to USB to, to micro USB. I just I just want one set of cables to bring with me, and I would love for them to work with everything I've got. Which was the yeah, promise of USB C. Yeah, it was the promise of USB C. But here we are. Here we are. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about connectivity of the wireless type. So these, let's see. They they use Bluetooth four point one, I believe. They do indeed. I, I've been getting really good range from them. Uh, I would estimate about 10 meters. That is not a scientific number whatsoever. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I haven't like gone to um, the the football field and like counted <laughs> how many yards away I'm walking. Um, but uh, you know, it's it like about where my Pebble Time watch loses its Bluetooth connection. That's about where my headphones also lose theirs. So that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny you mentioned this because I might actually have um, some numbers to back up that 10 meter figure because um, some of my work has to do with um, GPS. Um, <laughs> so like from my office to this atrium area on the third floor of the building where I work is 10 meters. And that's about where it starts to falter for me. Um, okay. And I, and I know that because I've had to test that like a million times on this app I've been working on. Um, so I think that 10 meter fig figure is just about right. Yeah. And I, I haven't had many problems with like connecting the, the headphones to new devices or whatever. They're, you know, they're pretty consistent with like making themselves available and showing up in lists. Um, most of the times when I'm using them, I'm literally just like turning them on. They automatically connect to my phone. I play something. I finish. I turn them off, you know? <laughs> and yeah. then the next time I turn them on, I connect them to the same phone. So there's there's no switcheroonies going on. Um, I, I do use them with my MacBook Air occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do get some weird 
audio artifacts when I'm listening to stuff on Mac OS. Interesting. Um, and, and it goes so far as to like like when you first turn on the the headphones, right? And they make the and yeah. then like when they when they connect, they go do do do. And like that do 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 has like a weird stutter to it whenever it's connecting to the MacBook. Interesting. And I'm like, what on earth is going on with this handshake that could possibly interfere with being able to play the sound? Yeah, the thing that's literally burned into the into the silicon, basically. Yeah, right? it's, it's 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 not loading that sound file from the device that it's connecting to. That is on board right. on the earbuds themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then yeah, like like I I get kind of weird. Um, I probably should have gone and tested this a little bit more recently, but I, I feel like it was like a crackling sound kind of thing when I'm like uh, editing stuff in Audacity on Mac OS that does not appear when I'm editing stuff over a wired connection. Interesting. Um, in Audacity on Mac OS, yeah. Um, that being said, it could be any number of factors here. Like Audacity does not play well on Mac OS uh, mm -hmm. in general. So, you know, like... Who knows where, which part of the stack is, <laughs> is the trouble point here? Right. Um, and I guess from my part, what I would say too is like, I've had trouble with almost every pair of Bluetooth headphones I've ever had, no matter, no matter what the cost is, um, no matter what form factor they take, where um, my MacBook, um, and this, this has happened to me across multiple MacBooks, so I think it's, I think it's a software thing. It's very clearly seems okay. to be a software thing, where occasionally... Um, especially when I'm doing Android development um, and I'm running like an Android simulator, um, uh -huh. it will actually downgrade the codec that's being used. So it'll go from like, um, you can think of it as like a Kindle, like going from like FM quality, FM radio quality, like sound down to like AM quality sound. Uh -huh. um, and that, that's been a thing that like I've had to install some other software from that Apple provides in order to like manually force it to never use that codec. <laughs> yeah right but i think you're right too that just at the core that's what all of us is saying is that um bluetooth drivers or the bluetooth like firmware stack is kind of buggy um and you know apple has put a lot of effort into it and other manufacturers have, uh, and, and and developers have put a lot of effort into it on the windows and linux side um but you know it's still kind of a um you know, a 20 year old brand new thing, right? Like it's been around for a while, but we still, we still haven't figured it out. Turns out radio communication is really difficult. I gotta take a beating. I know I did. Uh, let's move on to the physical cord. So I think this is probably like one of my favorite parts of this peripheral. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like this kind of, it's not a, a thin, flimsy cord, you know? It's got this kind of rubbery coating to it um, that, like, precludes it from tangling ever, ever. Yeah. Um, it also, like, resists being bent at extreme angles, which gives me a lot of confidence that, like, the copper wiring inside won't get severed from, like, repeated folding. Yep. Um, I love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'd have to agree with, with all of those things. Um, you know, I actually even had a situation where, uh, I thought a pair of, uh, my sound buds had kind of a problem where there was like an issue with, um, you know, the copper inside as has like either, either like severed or was bent on so that, you know, it just wasn't able to, um, continue the connection. And, you know, mm -hmm. I saw no evidence of that. Right, because it still it still looked awesome, but I th I thought that was it. Turns out I just hadn't charged it. <laughs> turns out <laughs> turns out the problem was it needed to be charged again, and charging it again was just fine. Actually, I might have also part of it could be attributed to like the macOS Bluetooth stack all over again because I think I paired it to a phone and it was it was just fine. And you know they they keep on trucking, so the build quality is nothing to sneeze at here for sure. Yeah, the the one thing that I would complain about for the cord is that like um unlike the wired headphones that mm -hmm. i used to use which i you know had figured out 
of the perfect way to like wrap it around my hand a bunch of times and then like slip it off of my hand and wrap it around perpendicular to that, you know, to secure it. Um, I have not figured out a good way to just like wrap this cord up on its own. Yeah. So the only way that I have to like store it is either keep it around my neck uh-huh. and make sure that it's under my collar so that it doesn't accidentally fall off again. Uh-huh. Um, or put it into its little travel sack and keep the travel sack in its little Ziploc bag in right. the mesh pocket of my backpack. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not quite as versatile, uh, as, as my old corded headphones in that sense. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I got a few miscellaneous things to talk about before we end. Um, I've owned three of these so far and I found that it had some like weirdly inconsistent manufacturing. Mm-hmm. Um, so like some of the rubber parts would not quite be shaped the same that they were like the previous time that I bought these. Yeah. Um, so like one time the the little rubber covering that like you that goes over the uh, the US the micro USB port right. Yeah. Um, it was like a little bit thicker on one end than it used to be. So it, it I couldn't quite push it down into the housing that it was supposed to fit snugly mm-hmm. into, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I, I think like the wing tips have like looked slightly different. Yeah. Um, and that didn't seem like a, a manufacturing defect. It seemed like they just kind of changed the style of the wing tips that like in between when I bought these and, uh, and it just kind of, you know, like, weirded me out a little bit (laughs) totally yeah i think that's kind of i feel like uh we were talking about in the fringe how anchor kind of subtly updates their product um from time to time or we'll just take stuff out and replace it with something that looks very similar um but is slightly different and i think that's just kind of part of their mo um you know unlike a company like apple that's very like focused on their cadence and like making sure everybody knows when a new thing is released or when a what every conceivable change that might entice somebody to buy something is out. I think Anchor probably is a little bit more iterative, right? Um, Mm -hmm. In the sense of like, well, you know, we might have 37 different versions of these in the wild, and it doesn't really matter which one you get because they're all going to meet our standards. But we're going to try things out, and we're going to, you know, figure out what people like. And we're going to keep building until we feel like we get there. And you can, and you can kind of see that too. I think we were talking in the fringe, particularly about their battery packs, about how kind of they have every conceivable, you know, combination of like, oh, it charges with micro USB and has USB-C ports. It charges with USB-C and has a bunch of USB-A ports. Um, it has power delivery. It doesn't have USB power delivery. Um, it seems like that's just kind of their approach to building consumer products. Um, but I agree with you. It's kind of like, um, it's hard to tell. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's conceivable that there'd be a situation where people would run into, you know, maybe they wanted something a certain way. And just because that product has shifted slightly, um, they might get something ever so slightly different. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> you know, because like if, if I really like this thing and I lose my pair and I want to buy a new one, like I want to be assured that I'm going to be getting something that I like again. And the best way for me to be sure of that is if I know that they're going to be the same as they were before. Right. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. You're anticipating like a carbon copy. Like when you, yeah. when you go back and hit the reorder button in Amazon, you're expecting to get a carbon copy back. The exact same thing. Um, and yeah, what you what you said about their customer service being really good, um, I would like to note that that is probably only going to be the case if you buy a product that has like their in-house warranty. Right. Um, and the way that you ensure that is you make sure that like the, the seller on Amazon is Anchor Direct um, or you're just buying it literally from Anchor.com. Um and we discovered that because we bought like their their Nintendo Switch branded uh, portable battery, um, and did not realize that oh, Anchor Direct is not one of the sellers on Amazon. Uh oh. You know, so we ended up buying it from what turned out to be a third party seller. Then when it uh, crapped out on us, 
Anchor was like, oh, that's you didn't buy it from us. You're gonna have to like you know deal with with your seller, and we're like, oh darn. Yeah. So. All right, Brandon. Uh, I think that that is enough headphone goodness from us today. Sure is. Where can people find you around the internet? Uh, you can find me uh, all over town, but particularly on Twitter, where I'm Brandon underscore MN. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at that same username, where I post pictures of bread and um, other food, but mostly bread. Uh, around town, uh, here in M- Minneapolis, I'm often drinking coffee. So if you go to a coffee shop and uh, hear somebody uh, talking about things like we've discussed here, including headphones, advertising, uh, or uh, you know, randomer things like um, uh, I don't know, what were we talking about before this? We were talking about some wacky stuff like cults. The, the- the Daytons came up once again. The Daytons, yeah. Uh, the Daytons came up once again. Yeah, the Colts and Daytons. Not that those two things are linked. I don't want to imply that they are because the Daytons are very good people. Um, uh, but that's where you can find me. And you'll know it's me because I'll be saying things like that. How about you, Ian? Uh, well, you can find me across the river in St. Paul. Um, or also on Twitter as Ian Arbuck. Uh, this episode of Second Opinion Reviews, just like all of the episodes of Second Opinion, are released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free Phew. to use any any part of it if you like, uh, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO65. Uh, if you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, maybe you've got uh, another pair of Bluetooth earbuds that uh, that you think are pretty nifty that other people need to hear about, uh, go to our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. Uh, and if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make tech-focused uh, podcasts here on the Nexus you can uh, support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. Until next time, have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological convergence. convergence. Technology is ever-evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why, every month on The Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.